Hey folks, something I've been wanting to do for a while. I want to give you my thoughts on the Gravely Zero Turn that we purchased a year ago. Yes, it's been a year. I can't believe it's been a year. But anyways, want to give you my thoughts on it? Possibly it could help you if you're looking to get a zero turn mower. But it's just going to be my thoughts. I don't like doing reviews because I'm not saying a Gravely is better than any other brand out there. It's just what we purchased, my thoughts, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and where I went wrong, which we'll get to that part. But anyways, let's go over the tractor real quick. So it's kind of dirty right now. I've been out in the back running around, cutting. But anyways, this is the tractor. Got to, like I said, got to clean it up. Anyways, by no means is this a commercial grade tractor. This is more of a residential type mower. As far as mowing is concerned and doing exactly mowing, I'm going to have to give it a 10 out of 10. However, there are a couple things that I think could be improved on and that I don't like, which I'm going to show you right now. One is what the heck is this thing? All that thing does is vibrate, makes a lot of noise, drives me crazy. The other issue that it, it's not a deal breaker, but got this headlight bar on the front when I purchased the tractor they did tell me that <laughs> that's a pretty weak item usually one of the lights will go out well upon delivery one light was already out so they replaced the bar the light lasted a day and then the other then the light went out so I don't mow at night so it's not a deal breaker for me but anyways just something to keep in mind about that design of a light bar on a Gravely tractor. The other thing I don't like is when turning, if you turn, you pivot the tractor, it will tear up sod. So that's not a thing that I like because, you know, it is a zero turn. It's designed to get into tight corners and pivot around, but I hate tearing up the sod. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's talk about the ease of maintenance. Actually, it is super easy to work on. Oil change, piece of cake. Air filter is right at the back, piece of cake. Spark plug is right there. Oil filter is right there. Everything is a piece of cake to take care of on this thing. It is, like I said, it's probably the easiest piece of equipment I've ever changed oil on or did any kind of maintenance on. So another that's another you know plus. When it, concerning the Gravely. Air filter's right there. Wow. We had to clean some stuff out of there. But yeah, air filter's right there. All your oil and oil valve is right there. Seat lifts up. Get to your battery. Get a, I mean, you can get, you have access to everything. I mean, it is super easy. I don't know if this camera is going to focus or not, but right here is a little valve. When you get the tractor, it comes with a hose. You just hook the hose up to that, open the valve, drain your oil out. Your oil filter is right here. Super easy oil change. Like I said, probably the easiest oil change I've ever done on any piece of equipment. So I did see someone post uh, about a Gravely tractor, how bad the oil chains were. But this one, super easy. You also have a nice little hatch here to get into your belts, inspect your belts when you're cutting. Everything is right here at your fingertips. Does have a little tool tray. That goes right there if you want to carry some tools with you. All in all, I'm going to say 1 out of 10. I'm going to give the tractor an 8. Very easy to use. My wife loves to use it. She gets on it. She goes all over the place. She drags a little trailer, picks up yard debris, takes it back to the burn pit. 
So yeah, very user-friendly tractor. And like I said, it's not a commercial grade tractor. I have actually in a year's time, I've put 35 hours on it. So let's go into my mistake. Something that may help you out if you have a project such as we have or that we have taken on. And I'll explain. When we first bought our property, had it cleared to build the house, clearing company came in and I only had them clear where the house was gonna be put. Front yard, backyard, but that's about it. Came in with a front end loader, big John Deere front end loader with a grapple. So yeah, they came in here with that grapple and they just, I, that deer with that grapple on it just picked these trees up and just hauled them out of here and dug everything up. It was phenomenal. But there's a huge cost in doing that. Which leads us to the next thing. We kind of thought at first when we bought the zero turn, we were just going to be maintaining the yard. Well, as time goes on, we start wanting them to clear the woods. We're doing it on ourselves. Old school, well, not old school. We're using a chainsaw. And we're just going through this thing, cleaning it out, cleaning all the underbrush out. Thank goodness I have a neighbor. He's got a subcontract, a Kubota sub, subcom, subcompact tractor with a backhoe on it, with a bucket on it. He comes over here and he can run right through these. After we knock all the trees down and clean the brush out, he can come in here with that. He's got a backhoe on it. He could dig all the crap out, the, the, the roots, the stumps, phenomenal piece of equipment. We have other property as well, so we haven't even started to touch that, that we want to improve upon. So, long story short, thinking and not, you know, seeing through the trees, just seeing the forest, <laughs> we should have invested in a a tractor such as that, you know, a subcontract, uh, sub, I can't pronounce that for some reason. It just baffles me, but subcompact tractor with a loader, small grapple on it where I could get in here. Once I clear, I could, I could dig the earth, dig up the roots with that grapple and just, just keep it clean because I, the, the amount of brush that even after we clean it, that keeps coming back up. It's just a, a never-ending cycle. So, long story short, you know, you look at what your long-term plans are when you make your investment. Probably save you, even though those subcompact tractors are not cheap by any stretch of the, at least on my budget, they're not cheap. And I'm probably at some point going to sell this tractor or sell the zero turn and reinvest in a subcompact with a loader, get a, a grapple attachment, put a belly mower on it. The other thing that we do want to do is we want to fence our properties. And I'll probably get a post hole digger for it, to, for it as well because it does have a rear PTO on it. So we should be good to go. And just to give you an idea, this here is we still have all this to clear. I mean, we have a lot of woods that we need to thin out, clear out, you know, make it presentable. But anyways, that's the reason. I feel as though we made the mistake that we did. We should have just went ahead, bit the bullet, and invested in the proper tractor for the proper job.
hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it gives you something to think about if you're going to go down the road of buying some lawn equipment. Take care of your properties. This is just something that I have run into. Again, the Gravely Zero Turn, as far as doing what it is designed to do, cutting grass, 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's got some manufacturing issues that you know I personally don't like, but you know I think they probably all do. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it gives you something to think about while you're shopping for your lawn equipment. And until the next video, we'll see you later.